fuck up. What's that? You just you don't know what you're talking about, so shut the fuck up about it. <laughs> you're really sensitive about this, aren't you? <laughs> you don't yes, have to be in the room here. Okay. Continue, please. <laughs> but avoid the things you don't know what so, about. Who uh, uh, okay, the here, here's the problem, guys. In case you're wondering why does why do we have to speculate? Why does he have to speculate? Why do we have to speculate about who has signed what and what? Is that in past, like as recent as Pop SS, Mike and Philip actually told Microsoft and everybody else, hey, you guys haven't involved FreeBSD, you haven't involved FBC, please bring them in. Let's get together to do this. And now, uh, 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 just hold on a second, Mark. And now, we only get rumor and speculation when we say, hey, let's ask to be included on this one. We're not. And the only thing we get is rumor and speculation. We don't, and, and when, so we don't know what's going on. You're right, we don't know what's going on. And that's the, that's the heart of the misunderstanding here amongst the whole community, is that part of the community gets in, the rest of the community does not. The most recent bug, the whole community got brought in, and we don't hear why. All we hear is rumor and innuendo, which honestly, some of it's probably bullshit. And, and, but we're left with misunderstandings on all sides. So are you surprised that we might be a little bit speculative about what happened when only one community is in? I, I mean, that's all I can say. Previous the embargo from fixing these problems. That's not the, the point. If you don't like people spreading rumors about FreeBSD, don't spread rumors about. I'm not spreading a rumor. FreeBSD is embargoed from fixing these problems. The foundation is the foundation. The foundation is not the project. <laughs> okay. Fine. What's the difference? So there's a difference which we don't understand. Okay. Why should we have to understand that difference? Because it doesn't get us. It doesn't help everybody's machines get fixed. Let's let's stop focusing on the difference for a second. Who at Intel did you ask? I did not ask Intel. Mike Larkin mailed the people who worked previously on the right. on the meltdown problems. Inside, uh, of, inside of Intel, the meltdown and Spectre issues were relatively widely circulated, and that caused problems for Intel. So the new security problems are significantly more constrained inside of Intel. And if you're not talking to the right people, I am certain Mike Larkin has contacted the right people. Yeah, we're pretty sure of that. Because he gets no reply. And he got plenty of replies earlier. If he didn't get it, I can't tell you. He just got that's, that's very interesting speculation on your part that Mike's not reaching the right people, considering who Mike actually also works for. Right. I'm just, I'm just saying that there are very, very few people inside of Intel. And they play things very, very close to the chest after Spectrum and Meltdown. And without a <coughs> business relationship or other relationship, Well, I don't trust Intel. <laughs> Let's be quite honest. Why should any of us trust Intel after this? <clears throat> what we need is we need to take these mitigations, which I think for one of one or two of these, I think it probably is a very, very tiny couple of cash flushes inserted into the kernel and call it a day until better hardware shows up. That's what I suspect. Meltdown was a very complicated fix. I think this will not be as complicated. What can we do across the community to have a better platform for testing these minor things across more workloads? For, that, on the performance side? Performance side, that's one of the big questions. What, what can we do to have a suite that we can test these easier across a wide range? I, I'm away from all the other politics. You know, what can we do on that frame if that's the question? that pops up every single time. I think that's a question about the performance implications of the fixes. It doesn't stop us from requiring the fixes. I, I'm not saying it does. All I'm, 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 I'm reaching out and asking about what can we do to work together so when people want those answers, we can help with that. That's all. We don't even know what the, what the solution is for the problem. We don't I, well, know I know I'm saying that when there is a potential solution, yeah. What can we do to have a platform to test that against a wide range of things? Or, you know, I don't know. Just 
I don't think it's important too, you know, with all this stuff. I, I'm not concerned about the performance impact. We're gonna have to pay it no matter what it is. Anybody else? Yes. So, uh, I mean, most of the architecture is for, you know, for the sake of parallelism. The security checks are being done in parallel, and that means basically for the end, they're actually confirmed. So I don't think these things are exclusive to Intel. And from the Spectre and Meltdown folks I know, I think there's a lot more fallout coming. I don't think it's just one thing. I don't know to what extent the cost of the fixes will be. I think this one's gonna be cheap. I think it's just gonna be a couple of cash flushes compared to what Meltdown was. Meltdown was a very serious um, rejiggering because you have to touch CR3 twice on a round trip for a process and there's no other way of doing it. Philip Gutcher tried to find ways of doing it without touching CR3 a second time around, but the solution, all the other solutions he invented were actually also slower. So, but that's meltdown. In fact, the Spectre things are not quite the same. Uh, we're not quite the same. Now, as to your point that other CPU families also have these problems, yes, that is the case. Other CPU families do, but none of all, if you take all the Spectre problems in all the other CPU families combined, it is a shadow compared to the problems Intel's had in the last year and a half. It's minor. Sure, but, but the class of problems that I'm talking about are all the speculation ones. All the major processors have hundreds of instructions that you like at any time. Yep. So we're gonna see plenty of yeah. more problems. Yes, yes, but, but very few CPU architectures actually went um, and did speculative loads and didn't consider the TLB and cache side effects. Just ignored them. But AMD did a lot better here. We'll see, we'll see. Yes. Over there in the corner. Uh, I'll just preface this by saying uh, I am a QVC developer, a former security officer. I have not signed any NDAs. I don't know about any of these potential future issues. Um, but I am very concerned that there will be more fallout from the existing issues we know in Intel CPUs being exploited in new ways. Uh, at the top of my list, uh, P-code interpreters. Uh, I think it's very likely that some BPF implementations in the kernel will have issues where they uh, misspeculate on what the opcode is and start, the, the CPU starts executing code which ends up loading something from kernel memory, BPF is running in kernel memory already, um, and then later on, uh, it turns out, no, that if it predicted the branch, it's a different opcode it's, it's executing. So I, I think uh, we need to spend a lot of attention on looking for other ways that the existing, the, 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 the known speculative ex execution issues can be exploited, um, in, in addition to speculating about potential future uh, issues to be found in the LCPUs. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. Anybody else? Can you, can you summarize the statements? Because we could all barely hear it. Or will that make it? Um, he's he's um, he's concerned. He, he's concerned that we actually need to do more audit of the, the consequences on the software side. Um, yeah, from, um, rather that rather than, rather than just worrying about the kernel side and putting the mitigations in place. Um, I think, yeah, yeah, okay, yes, we go to you again. Yeah, uh, given all the fixes in OpenBSD right now, is there any modern Intel CPU that you like more than the others, or are these bugs consistent across everything? The AMD cache architecture avoids this problem largely. Their cache is their cache essentially has three states for a line. Allocated and invalid, allocated and valid, and invalid. When they speculatively fetch ahead and load something into a cache line, it is not marked valid until instruction, completion, and commit. If another instruction accesses the same cache line, speculatively, it stops. 
So you end up with a minor bit of specter occurring there, especially because of cash eviction and TLB evictions, which people will eventually come around to recognize that you can time evictions and direct map caches. Those are there, but the, but the, the concerns are far smaller than they are with what in, with Intel's design. Yeah, and uh, if you head off into like the ARM CPUs, so they had some specter issues, but the CPUs have tons of chicken bits, so they've been able to actually allow, tell, 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 tell operating system vendors what type of chicken bits they should set. So for example, OpenBSD on ARM64 is now setting a couple of chicken bits and soft stopping some specter problems on, on a variety of ARM64 CPUs, but we'll actually see exactly those chicken bits being set soon in BIOSes, so the operating system doesn't have to do it. A chicken bit, what is a chicken bit? A chicken bit is a feature hidden inside the CPU which turns off some optimization, which the, the vendor was never, the chip vendor is not quite sure yet whether that feature is completely mature, so they add a little knockout bit so they can turn it off later on. And they don't disclose what this chicken bit is until the problem hits, and then they can tell the operating system from the BIOS vendors to go and turn off that feature. Quite often chicken bits are also used when you build a pipeline and you've got a, 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 a part of your pipeline that doesn't quite work yet, but it will be in a future generation. You can already build it into the pipeline of your CPU, but leave it off. So that the electrical timing and the placement of it is already built into the entire thing, even though it doesn't work yet. So that later on when you get that feature working, you then don't have to then add it late into the CPU architecture. It's already wired in. You've done the preliminary engineering as to how it fits timing-wise. So that's what chicken bit is. Yes. Anybody else? Is there someone back here? No? No? Okay. Open discussion or do we are we just done? Thank you for listening. Anybody want to talk to me afterwards? Find me in the corner. I've, I've, I've got about an hour before I'm going to catch a flight. Just one. Oh, one question. Yeah. Um, so some people still use Core 2 dual CPUs, hoping that they are better, and they are buying all ThinkPads. Is that anything that anybody in the room actually supports? Um, I, I, I don't know if the old C okay, very, very old CPUs will be exempt from this, but you have to go really far back. So the speculative execution showed up in the netburst architecture, which is just after Pentium 4. So I don't think core one will even help you. Yeah. I think it has it as well. And remember core one was broken. Core one would speculatively load page table entries through the cache and have a bug where they forget to, where they forget to write out the modified bit of a page table entry. So, so speculation has been part of the Intel optimization scheme for quite some time. So, yeah. okay, thanks. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.